On the 14th of April, 2022, Russian Navy's Black Sea flagship, Moskva, which had triple layered air defense systems, was unable to stop two incoming Neptune anti-ship missiles, which ultimately resulted in its sinking. That was a major blow by Ukraine on Russia. It appears that the country has managed to land another critical blow. Ukrainian attack overnight on the port of Sevastopol, home to Russia's Black Sea Fleet in Russian-occupied Crimea, struck a Russian submarine and a landing ship. Multiple videos and photos on social media show the aftermath of the attack with huge flames alongside the water at the port. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes the attack on Russia's Black Sea Fleet in Sevastopol. Let's get started. Before we proceed, a word on NordVPN, which is one of the most trusted VPN brands worldwide that has a no-log policy validated by Deloitte, an industry-leading Big Four auditing firm. NordVPN provides an encrypted tunnel that protects your privacy by preventing external entry to your internet traffic, as well as enabling you to access content that's blocked based on geolocation. Best of all, with one NordVPN account, you can secure up to six devices at the same time. Get an exclusive NordVPN deal with massive savings by going to nordvpn.com slash defense or clicking the link in the description. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. The Russian Ministry of Defense said, as a result of being hit by enemy cruise missiles, two ships under repair were damaged. So there's an official admission from Russia. According to the Russian Ministry of Defense, the attack involved 10 missiles and three USVs. Russian media reported that two people were killed in the attacks and another 26 wounded. Mikhail Razvozhayev, the Russian-installed governor of Sevastopol, took to the Telegram messaging app to post a nighttime photo showing what appeared to be port infrastructure burning fiercely. He said that at least 24 people had been injured. According to Andrei Yusov from the Defense Intelligence of Ukraine, the attack resulted in damage to a Russian dock landing ship and a submarine, as well as the equipment of the shipyard. In a note, the Ukrainian Air Force commander, Mykola Oleshchuk, thanked the pilots of the Air Force for a splendid job, while mentioning the explosions in Crimea. In the meantime, a tweet from the Ukrainian Air Force made an indirect reference to the attack on Sevastopol, taunting Russia without explicitly taking responsibility. According to multiple unconfirmed accounts, these two ships are reportedly the improved Kilo-class submarine Rostov-on-Don and the Rapucha-class landing ship Minsk. The Project 636.3 Varshavyanka B-237 Rostov-on-Don diesel electric submarine is one of the newest submarines in the Russian Federation, having been launched only in 2014. The boat is worth more than $300 million. It's been used to fire caliber cruise missiles against Ukrainian targets. This is the first time ever that Ukraine has managed to hit a Russian submarine. While the status of the submarine at this point is unclear, the damage on the Ropucha-class landing ship Minsk seems significant. The Project 775, NATO reporting name Ropucha-class, Polish for toad, is a class of landing ship built in Poland for the Soviet Navy. They were designed for beach landings and can carry a 450-ton cargo. These ships have a length of 102.5 meters, or 369 feet, and have a displacement of around 4,080 tons when fully loaded. It appears sufficiently damaged for it to be declared a total hull loss. Given the fact that Russia has pointed to the use of cruise missiles, and Ukrainian officials have congratulated the pilots of its air force, it's most likely that an air-launched cruise missile was used. The candidate appears to be air-launched Storm Shadow or Scalp EG standoff missiles that can be launched by Ukrainian Air Force Su-24 Fencer Strike Aircraft. Storm Shadow is an Anglo-French, low-observable, long-range, air-launched cruise missile developed since 1994 
by Matra in British Aerospace, and now manufactured by MBDA. The French equivalent is known as Scalp EG. Britain has provided the missile to Ukraine. It's comparable to cruise missiles such as the American AGM-158 JASSM and the German-Swedish KEPD-350 Taurus. Storm Shadow is equipped with a TR-6030 turbojet engine, providing it with a max range of 560 kilometers, or 350 miles. The missile has a top speed of Mach 0.95. Storm Shadow is equipped with a 450 kilograms or 990 pound brooch warhead. This is a two stage warhead made up of an initial shape charge, which cuts a passage through concrete, earth, etc., allowing a follow on warhead to penetrate the target. For mid course guidance, Storm Shadow employs a triple navigation system using inertial navigation, GPS, and terrain reference navigation. For terminal guidance, it uses an imaging infrared seeker and automated target recognition software for pinpoint accuracy. There is a possibility that several of these missiles were launched together and a few went through. The flow of longer range Western weapons has enabled Ukraine to carry out attacks that wouldn't have been possible earlier. This attack seems to have achieved excellent outcomes for Zelensky's forces. It's likely that both vessels have been crippled and will be out of action for a long time. While the Russian Ministry of Defense has already announced that the Minsk landing ship, as well as the Rostov-on-Don submarine, will be fully restored and will continue their combat service as part of their fleets, there is a possibility that it may not be logical to repair them and Russia may have to discard them. Well, these are crucial assets, but it's not only about these two boats, there's more to it. Being the base of the Russian Black Sea Fleet in Crimea, the port of Sevastopol holds immense military and symbolic significance. Any harm inflicted on these facilities deals a substantial blow to Russia's capacity to conduct ship maintenance and repairs. Slowly but surely, the Russian Black Sea Fleet's aura is diminishing. Kremlin backers are calling for strong retaliation. It remains to be seen how President Putin responds. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting. And kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.